Mexico's embarrassing concession was due to foreign intervention, it is clear that he did not listen to his fellow Kenyans as he later claimed. What is evident and should be clear to Mr. Ruto and his government is that the voices of the people are and will continue to be the most important as stated plainly under Article 1 of Kenya's Constitution 2010. While we, the people's loyal position, acknowledge, encourage and respect people's voices, the victory is by no means complete. The opaqueness in the purported cancellation of the JKI and Ketraco deals needs to be examined. In addition, the Adani connection the Social Health Authority, SHA, and Social Health Insurance Fund, SHIF, the Adani needs to be severely uh, severed immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, co-chair of the dialogue process, I can attest that we negotiated in good faith. This regime has demonstrated time and again that they are not interested in justice or in the interests of Kenyans. Since the tabling of the report in Parliament almost a year ago, on December 7, 2023, the NADCO agreement has not been implemented. The few concessions on the cost of living have not even been honored. The matters relating to electoral justice have not been implemented, including evaluation of the 2022 election outcomes. The constitutional and legal reforms to ensure credible elections are still pending. Aggression against Jubilee, because we also have that as an, a very important agenda item, and that's not contained in my statement here. But that was a very important agenda, integrity and commitment to multi-party democracy. And by that we meant that this state-sponsored aggression on Jubilee Party had also to stop. We now know there's even, again, state-sponsored appeal to the higher courts. The Kenya Kwanza regime is clawing back and putting the country on a dangerous, dangerous trajectory. They are determined to violate the NADCO agreement and the proposed constitutional and legal instruments agreed. Of particular concern are the constitutional timelines for boundary delimitation and the reconstitution of the Independent Electron Boundaries Commission, IEBC. The regime is already breaching the constitution by failing to meet constitutional deadlines for boundary delimitation. We are already facing, ladies and gentlemen, a constitutional crisis. And I saw the cry by the management of the IBC uh, saying they're seeking an advisory for the Supreme Court. Well, they should just tell Mr. Ruto to implement NADCO report. On IBC, the regime is not interested in the reconstitution of a credible commission. Through sponsored court cases, the process of setting up the panel has been frustrated. We have a simple question for the judiciary, which as we say, the last line of defense for a democracy. Did the Constitution envisage a situation where the commissioners of, I, of the IABC are not in office? Did the framers of our Constitution contemplate a situation where the courts can allow for a dysfunctional commission. The unpopular regime does not want Kenyans to exercise their sovereign authority by electing leaders through by elections and referendums, recalling unpopular elected officials or members, and properly preparing for the 2027 elections. Kenya Kwanza is preparing to undermine the people's sovereign authority and manipulate the next election. We will, of course, not allow them. The bill in Senate to stop, for example, the live streaming of results is one way of stealing elections, the coming elections. We will not allow them. In 2024, as the country's position deteriorated, 
Kenya's violent youth, headed by Generation Z, Generation Z, returned to the streets to seek justice for Kenyans. They were confronted with a severe force as of 2023. In reality, there have been orders of abduction and extrajudicial killings following the Gen C revolution. We want to tell the Gen C and the Gen Wate that we will continue to stand with them against this state-sponsored violence and impunity. We are still unearthing evidence of infractions, including those that contravene international law. The regime cannot understand the just, the just demands of Kenyans cannot be wished away. As the lives of Kenyans become intolerable and precarious, we continue to demand justice. The next mandamanos will resolve Kenya's problems once and for all. Finally, we want to warn the Kenyan Kwanzaa regime in the clearest possible terms. We will not allow A. The balkanization of our nation B. We will never again allow the rigging of elections and C. We will continue to resist against oppression come what may. Thank you very much and may God bless our country Kenya. Asanteni. Kama kuna swali, but I'm probably before you ask, uh, maybe give opportunity to Mwishmua Peter Mwavi. They are actually bought with taxpayers' money. We have said time and again that these are goons sponsored by the state walk, using walk talkies. No amount of denial by the Inspector General and the DCI will convince Kenyans that this is not the case. And I want to challenge Mr. Kanja. I have respect for him. That he should stand in the, actually, if he's in charge, because he's also a member of National Police Service Directorate, to say no and dismantle this criminal crowd. Because the international community is watching. We must tell them, Kenya is not an island. And everybody is focusing their mind on See the deterioration in the rule of law practice in this country. So, much more money. Paul Asan. You said that twice, three times. Anapeleko kwa bush. Alavu anaulizana. Na hapa, iko sawa. Yaani hapo, amumalizie hapo. Maximum, maximum fear and the terrorism. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency and colleagues who are here, and members of the fourth estate. I hope I'll be able to give the story without being emotional. But I want to break it into two parts. And part one is at the barrio the day before and at the barrio of Erastus. The day before the barrio, uh, Rick G., the former deputy president, uh, called me and he asked me to represent him in that uh, funeral committee with 50,000 shillings and he also said that he would attend that burial. So when I went there I found so many people, roughly about 300 of them and uh, when I spoke to them because they gathered I spoke about what Rigiji had told me, Pole familiar and then I've also brought my pole and then I told them for what Rick G is doing in our community or area I would be pleased if Rick G himself uh, Stephen Kalonzo Msioka who is here somebody like Matiani our brother Eugene and the rest of them would join hands and liberate this country from what we are going through. The people who are there were very excited, extremely excited, even to hear that Rick G was going to come. But more importantly, when they heard that 
there is intention to bring all of us together so that we can liberate our country. That was the day before. And so I told Rigiji what we are vizuri na amesema unaweza kuja. And therefore the next day he called me and asked me can you wait for me in an appointed place so that we can go together. And we did so. And uh, he came and we went. I'm trying to make it short. And on reaching there we found very excited crowd because I can tell you on our arrival an announcement that we have arrived the crowd went wild. They were cheering. They welcomed us. The MC also did the same. We got a place where to sit. But when we sat, I observed one thing that was unique. That the area MP, one John Kiragochege, had declined to sit where the VIP tent was. And he decided to go and see where the Akorino bishops were. And I asked, why would it happen? I asked, just ask somebody. And they said he was offered and he declined. And so we sat in and listened to the people who were speaking. And then we listened to the sermon. Everything was looking okay. But at one point, when the bishop, the main bishop was preaching, there was sudden influx of young men sudden influx of young men who came from three different directions most of them did not come to stand or sit where we were what they did is that they sat next to the fence others near the gate and the rest were somewhere near the toilet and at one time i remember I went to the washroom and there is now when I was thinking later there was this one person who had a cape and was had a mask it was yeah, like hooded who from afar escorted me to the toilet though I had my boys and then he came back and went behind the VIP tent I did not take offense because I didn't know who he was I'm saying that because you'll hear what happens when I get into the sparrows. So, many people spoke, but I want to bring it to where I was invited by the area MCA. And the area MCA specifically, he actually hit out at the local MP for going to vote no, to vote yes against Rikichi. For that impeachment motion, as his vote, was the vote of Lemuru and he said that was not our wish. Now to Akapiga Makofi son. Then he is the one who invited me. I broke my speech into two. One, and I told the people, I'll give message of condolence, which I did. The second, I'll tell you uh, why I will talk about Rigji. So the first part went on well. Then I came to the second part and I started talking about how Rick G had come and decampaigned against me. However, I was now sharing a platform with him because we had decided to bury our interest in the greater interest of the community and the region. And as I started talking about Rigji, there was a huge surge of youth who came specifically to the VIP tent. And I noted that VIP tent was like a target. So I was speaking and looking at them and trying to bring peace, telling them I'm peaceful, everybody who is here is peaceful. And they said, don't tell us about Rikichi. You would have voted for you, but he told us not to vote for you. I told them, that's fine. Even me, I would even probably not speak to him. But now that we have a common problem, we need to move together. They now started shouting back. Said, no, 
We are not going to allow it. The first person to shout that, I told him, just relax. I explain, then you tell me whether what I've said is okay. But another person, a second one, shouted back. The third event was somebody who pulled out the support of the tent. In that tent, the, I'm seeing now, when I saw the tent was collapsing on him, I kind of stopped. <coughs> because I wondered, where am I going? A visitor is almost going down with the tent. But they pushed me out. Some of them are here. And of course, Rigji had his own uh, security. They took him to the car and hell broke loose. They ran after us. And I want to make this clear that they had intentions. Because for the first time, I ran, I ran frantically for two kilometers. Look like a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> and worse still is because it was down, downhill. So by the time I got where I was going, my knees were aching. <laughs> yeah, it's not a laughing matter, but we can laugh about it. And then at one time, again, we got onto the road, and then we saw those guys coming. Then they said, my guys told me, you know, these guys are carrying machetes, they are carrying tangas, some of them have got these nut rungus. So the best thing you can do to see Peter Barabara Tena, you, when they see they can't get you, and indeed I did that. And therefore we got into uh, one of the houses, I want to believe he's a cousin of Babayao, because he so introduced himself. And when we got there, he told us, you are not going to pass through the actual path. Mutapitia kwa majani, mutapitia kwa maindi, na mutapitia kwa nipia grass, and into the forest so that they, can, they don't see you when we explained what was happening. <coughs> and he quickly said, can you take off? Because probably he imagined what kind of uh, harm there was going to be. So we took off, and we ended up in some road, and one of my peers, then I told him, now that we are here, what do we do? I cannot go to the, walking to the main road. I don't know what will happen. So he said, we'll ask for a taxi. And he asked for a taxi. And this taxi came, it was very near the main road. And because I knew those guys probably would come to the shopping center of Bibirioni, I decided then I'll, I'll tell the taxi to drive me away towards Naivasha. And wherever I'll be, probably I'll look for a vehicle means to get home. And that's what they did. Uh, in the meantime, I was trying to call my guys. My driver was not picking. But at least one of the guys picked and he said he's okay. Vehicles have been hammered. But uh, where we end up to, you just go. We will uh, see what to do. So to me, I took off on the way towards uh, flyover. There's a center called flyover. And we were in that taxi. There are two Subarus. One black came in front. One green was at the back. But the one that came in front uh, just stopped a skew in front of us. And then this other one, when we checked, it was just almost knocking the bumper of the taxi. So two guys came from uh, the front one. They opened the rear door. I was seated with the area MCA. We got on the Toroka. I had my phone, and I'm saying that because the area MCA's phone had fallen off. Nikona Muliza, where is it? He said, I cannot trace it. Tukapiga ikawa inalia, lakini aichukuli. Akaniambia imeanguka huko kwa kiwanja. Sasa yangu nilikuwa nai. And uh, when they took us into the first vehicle, a few meters, like a hundred, they stopped again. Both of them, very close range. And they pulled him out into the rear car. And then a guy came from behind and I was sandwiched. Matthew, all these guys were hooded. And I said this because Palembele, I spoke about somebody who was hooded in the barrio. And now, these guys who are inside the Subaru, all of them, including the driver, 
are hooded. They have a mask. And they have, one had a cape and the others had, uh, I think, baklava. Now, uh, one of the things I was told is, lazima utati na utaka hapo. Na tukikuuliza, I'm saying this because they were speaking in Swahili. Na tukikuuliza kitu ujibu. Umasikia, eh. The only time I was allowed to check sideways, because later they told me, usiangalia kando, uangalia mbele, is only when they asked, unaona hii ni nini? Napandiyo ingine ni nini? Those were short guns. I've been a chairman of security, I know them. Now, one of the significant thing is, nimeona, they have short guns, the numbers, they are, the vehicles don't have number plates, and the guy in front has a walkie-talkie. So my conclusion was, who would be like this, driving a vehicle like this? Having seen what Jay-Z was going through, I am in for it. And so I said, I will answer. And uh, the long and short of it, the questions were telling. One question I was asked immediately is whether I love myself. <laughs> and I said yes. The second thing they asked is, do you have a wife? And I said yes. Do you love her? And I said yes. To my daughter. Do you have children? Yes. How many? I have four children. Two boys, two girls. You are talking too much. <laughs> you must answer after you are asked a question. So, I said yes. And therefore, they asked, do you have these children? Yes. Wanafanya kazi? Ndiyo. Unawapenda? Ndiyo. Aya. Then they kept quiet. Tukafika kwa that place called uh, Flyover. They took the road towards, I think it goes to Thika. Yes, yes. And it passes through some forest. Wakanyama, that road is rough. And those guys can drive very roughly. Mkua nasikia tupupu na gonga gongwa tu. And you know now, since they are holding their shotguns here, ikitingika hivyo nasikia ni kama you have been shot. So I'm saying my last prayers anyway. You don't know what is happening. And tukafika mahali kuna musitu na kuna stinging nettles. In kikui we call it the fire. I don't know whether that's the right word. Yes. So when we reached there, one of them asked, hapa ni sawa. Uh, the other one said no. To kind of kidogo wana ingia kwa musitu. Na hapa. Apana. Can tell me which road. I think it goes to, towards uh, uh, that hospital, Kijabi or something. Yes. And uh, they got into, they stopped at some forest. And then they, wa ata mmoja alitoka hapo. Kaulizo hapo ni sawa, kasema hapa ni sawa. Mi ni kasema nao, that is it, I'm, I'm, I'm done. At that point, jamaa karudi, akasema, ebu ni ambie, wewe huko na Twitter account, ni kamambia ndio. Nani ya nakuambikia gia yu Twitter account? Ni kasema ni mimi, I do it. Ni vitu gani unaandika hapo? Nikaambia na, naandika za zile vitu na naokota kutoka kwa group na vile Kenya kunaendelea kama kuna shida naandika eh kwa hivyo wewe ndio unajua sana Kaambia hapana ukiangalia zile vitu nimeandika zote ni zile watu wengine wanasema Na wewe unapenda serikali I know I lied because I said yes But I don't love it Survive. Yeah, I, I lied. I said yes. I said, "Bakasama, aya, twende." So we went down and they got onto the Mahi Road, and then we took off towards Narok. Now towards Narok, we got into a place kuna mali akuna manyumba, but there are some thickets. They stopped there. That was the third time, and said, "Up and your mission." So I didn't know whether I was a safari or a safari. 
Kasama hapa ni sawa kabisa. So as the mlikuwa mnataka nifanye aje because mimi sijaongea kitu mbaya mkiangalia vile niliongea pale kwa mazishi nyamaza sisi tuko ka tuko kazi the said keep quiet we are doing our work asema asante even bad things wakisema nasema asante then all of a sudden then akapinduka and from that point towards my mahiu there was intense discussion between them and somebody ule alikuwa mbele ndio alikuwa anauliza eh, wanasema kilo chali bravo something vitu kama hizo i know it's some coded word and most, mostly is used by police now having been a chair of security i know that and maybe other people they use but now i'm convinced that hizi magari hasina namba watu wako na guns wamejihud na wanaongea kilo chali and i saw what happened to the agency then i knew i was obviously with those kind of people who are molesting uh, peace loving kenyans just to stifle democracy and so they took off talking very coded extremely coded uh, language na wakaja towards nairobi branched off in fact kuna mahali walipitia wrong side pale ndio waingie southern bypass and they got into southern bypass they started driving slowly there was a conversation that was intense with the coded words uh, and then they said unajua tunaweza kukua now when they said this and i knew that road to go towards ngong forest i knew my life is over nikasema ndio but hakuna kitu kibaya mimi nimefanya na hakuna mtu nimetusi and so tukaja tu hivyo then they started speeding and that conversation uh, finally how it ended along uh, bypass was uh, yes sir copied the last word was yes sir copied after copied brakes uh the pigwa brakes gari i was alone i never saw i don't know how we lost the other one but you know i was told to face front so sijui kama hii ingine inakuja ama ikuji sijui i am only seeing up in between this guy and the driver and therefore along when they said yes sir copied wakapiga brakes gari kasimama they told me toka umbwa wewe and so i got out in the middle of no way akuzi sikuwa na nyumba sikuwa na nini nikajua sasa it's me and my god and prayer what time was it i can't tell time because they had actually maybe i forgot to say this, they had told me to switch off my phones and i had switched them off and i couldn't because now you have been put somewhere it's dark you don't want to attract the attention of somebody probably i want to mwangaza ya simu you want also to move in the dark somehow and so i didn't so i, I they, they, they put me on the side going towards langata and i thought they wanted to shoot me so the moment they moved i crossed on to the other side <laughs> and i i went kwa ditch nikapitia sasa hiyo kama ni mtaro walking and running walking and running and checking whether the any vehicle is coming i think, I, I guess it was between 6 or 800 meters i got to i got on to the road the branches off from karen i started running towards karen in the middle of the road and that's why i met with one border border fellow i almost nilikuwa na karibu nimshikilia hivi na muomba tafadhali tafadhali shouting but they stopped mbali nikamwambia ni wakora wananichapa nipatie lift hata nitalipa by the way those guys never took anything from me hawakuchukua simu hawakuchukua pesa hawakuchukua anything so he stopped and said weka hapo nikufikisha hapa hapa utauao and so he, i told him drop me at uh, the great corner i knew i would get a taxi then along the way i think he saw it was easy kaambia nimedropiwa hapo na wakora na nilijua hapo ni babaya uh, akaniambia naenda kilimani kaambia drop me there at kilimani so at kilimani i picked a cab which took me home na nikaambia kijana wangu you go pay for me the taxi at least we have evidence that that is what has brought me
That is how it was. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess that is very clear, and you can now see the intensity, the horrific um, harassment of Kenyans by state-sponsored goons. Of course, they should not be punished. Hey. And as we said in our statement, an attack on one, on all Kenyans. Thank you so much.